Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. If I would ask you this uh, quick question, what would be your answer? Do you think that Poland is still buying Russian resources, natural resources, like energy, like oil, petroleum, something like that? I think the quick answer would be no, I don't think it's buying. I mean, the Poles are not. I mean, the Poles said that the Russians are terrorists. The Poles said that Russia did this, Russia did that. They were the, you know, they have principles. Yes, they said that they, uh, you know, support Ukraine as long as it takes and so on. So they are the, I think, the most vocal country on the whole coalition uh, against um, Russia. But the truth is, uh, yes, they do. Yes, they still do business with the Russians. Yes, they still buy certain products. And they also uh, play the middleman role. Mm. So let me read you this article um, and uh, inform you that, you know, Poland has prin principles and values, but they are situational. And if you dare to point out that, they will somehow turn it on to you. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. We have this article from Russia Today from June 13th, 2023. Polish Prime Minister defends state oil giants purchases of Russian energy. So Warsaw does not want to, and I'm quoting, prevent the Czechs from being able to drive their cars. Mateusz Moraviec has said. So what's going on here? We have a, a, a um, Czech uh, refinery which is owned by Poland, Orlen, right here. Owns it 100%. So this is an oil refinery in the Czech Republic and the country's sole crude processing plant. Uh, and they buy, obviously, or whomever buys the, the product from the Russia's flagship Euros blend. And then they uh, do what they do best and put it on the market. So the Czech Republic has gasoline, what this guy says. So prevent it. You want them to, we don't want to prevent the Czechs from being able to drive their cars. So we're doing something good. We're just a middle person here. So here we have this Prague, Prague, this capital of the Czech Republic, which is seeking to secure more oil amid concerns of disruptions in transit via Ukraine, will reportedly buy 430,000 tons in June, up from 400,000 tons purchased in May. So uh, Orlen, this is a Polish company, explained that the landlocked Czech Republic remains reliant on Russian oil supplies via the Druzhba pipeline, friendship pipeline. Crude deliveries through Druzhba were exempted from EU embargo on Russian oil imports last year. Now, this is preferential and it is situational. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why. Remember, they are exempting certain things, but not other things. And I'm going to give you an analogy and see how would you answer that analogy question. And I'm quoting, infrastructural constraints make it impossible to fully cover Czech demand for oil from directions other than Russia. Orlen said in a statement, deliveries of Russian oil are necessary to ensure the security of raw materials and fuel in this country. Well, they could probably do it, you know, through, through Germany and, uh, you know, coming from the United States of America or somewhere else. But hey, <laughs> it's too hard. Commenting on Orlen's continued imports of Russian crude, the Polish Prime Minister defended the energy firm's policy, noting that we have access to the sea, but the Czech Republic does not. The Polish press uh, agency quoted the official as saying, and I'm quoting, they are therefore dependent on oil pipelines. We do not want to prevent the Czechs from being able to drive their cars, Moraviec said. No, my man, you're just a weasel. I will uh, make a video in a minute after this regarding North Korea. North Korea rece receives Russian oil via train, rail, rail, to doom, to doom, to doom, to doom. Okay, not via ships. 
okay so why don't they get anything like this from let's say transiting germany no because they say well it's too expensive we don't want to do this so how about we don't like the russians they are criminals they are terrorists they are this they are that but we do business with them basically so however moraviec marius wants to turn it you know i'm wait wait for my analogy wait for it <sighs> while poland adheres strictly to and met meticulously to all sanctions it remains by far the eu's biggest buyer listen to this of liquefied petroleum gas lpg from russia despite pledging to stop such imports the news outlet said so uh, Poland uh, likes sanctions and uh, abides by them, but is by far the EU's, the European Union's biggest buyer of liquefied petroleum gas from Russia. LPG is a fuel, uh, fuel gas containing propane and butan, or butane that is used in heating appliances and vehicles. LPG is particularly widely used for powering cars in Poland. Unlike seaborne oil and petroleum products, Russian LPG is not somehow subject to the EU import ban. It accounts for all about 14% of the total Polish fuel market. If that goes away, your price will go high, at least 14%. According to official estimates, when asked about the increase, now here is another weasel. Uh, the same guy but it's just a weasel uh, answer when asked about the increased energy imports from russia that one over there a policy that runs contrary to poland's rhetoric marius moraviec replied and i'm quoting while you in parentheses the reporting asking the question the reporter asking the questions want poles who have lpg powered ca get cars not to be able to drive them we do not so he turned it on to the reporter hey who who placed sanctions the report the reporter or moraviec government <laughs> so he tells now he turns on to the 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 guy who asked the question like hey we want them to have a well you stopped buying from the russians a lot of things but and now you are saying that uh, well we have to do this last year warsaw uh, bought 710 million euros which is 771 771 million dollars worth of Russian LPG compared with to 417 million euros 452 million dollars purchased by the rest of the EU so they bought I don't want to say double 771 versus 452 now let me give you the analogy that I was talking about so you have a uh, uh, a neighbor and the neighbor we all know or you know it's about you now you know he's a pedophile and you saw him doing this and you know he's continuing to do that but nobody can arrest him yet but he's doing it and continues to do what you know pedophiles do but you knowing that you say well we should place sanctions we should place things place sanctions and all that but then it's your son or your daughters which are minors obviously in this case birthday and this guy let's call him Gigi Gigi likes to make all kind of animals and all kind of things from balloons he's a funny clown you know like a guy from Ukraine so he makes all kind of things and you you want to make your son or your daughter happy you're gonna contact Gigi and say hey Gigi I don't like you I don't talk to you but can you come to the birthday party for about two hours to uh, make my kids happy for the birthday party yes of course i'm coming says uh, 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 Gigi. now this is poland all right now what would you do would you do that would you get the pedophile to come to your children or your child's birthday where there's a lot of children where the guy will feel like a fish in the water just making a little bit of uh, balloon uh, things and you know and you don't like him and everybody knows he's a as you said a terrorist of uh, this and that uh, like this guy's called russia so you tell me if you put it in that context you understand now and then when you are asked by another a neighbor say hey i don't know your name but anyway hey how about that thing you're gonna answer what you want my children not to have fun on their birthday you're like okay this is the way i see things 
Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.